2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. There's something fascinating about last words, the final few phrases that people say as they approach death. Some can be almost amusing, like Winston Churchill, who said, I'm bored of it all, or Groucho Marx, who said as he died, this is no way to live. Some can be profound, like Sir Isaac Newton, who said, I don't know what I may seem to the world, but as to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then in finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than the ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Others can be sad, like the famous poet T.S. Eliot, who managed only to say one word, the name of his wife, Valerie. But there's something about last words that makes us want to sit up and listen. We know that people will often finally say what they really want to say, that they will often say what is truly important to them. And this second and final letter from the Apostle Peter has the feeling of last words. In verse 13 of chapter 1, Peter says, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me. Peter knows that his death is imminent. Jesus has made it clear to him. And so he writes one final letter, his last words to these Christian believers. Thankfully, Peter gets a whole letter, but I think that if he were, were reduced to just one word, like T.S. Eliot was, it might be this. Remember. It comes up throughout the letter. In verse 1, he talks about the faith they've already received. In verse 3 and 4, he talks about what they have already been given. In verse 12, he says he is reminding them of things they know already. In verse 13, he says that it makes sense for him to remind them because he will die soon. In verse 15, he says he wants them to be able to remember these things when he has died. And at the beginning of chapter 3, he says that he has written this letter as a reminder. Peter's last word is remember. And so this evening, we're just going to look at the first two verses of this letter and see what Peter wants these Christians to remember. It would be quite easy to skip over these verses as if they were simply a New Testament letter equivalent of saying hello before getting to anything important. As Jonty said in a sermon on Sunday, it would be easy to treat these verses at one end of the letter like the end of a carrot, which you chop off without even thinking about it. But God does not waste words and he has things to teach us even from the introduction to this letter. So we're going to look at these two verses together and see two things Peter wants these Christians to remember. Remember the precious faith that you have received and remember that grace and peace come through knowing Jesus. Firstly, and we're going to spend most of our time here, remember the precious faith that you have received. Let me read verse one again. Simon Peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Peter says that these Christians have received a faith as precious as ours. But who is the ours referring to in that verse? The answer seems to be the apostles. The last thing he says about himself in the first half of verse 1, before then speaking about the Christians he was writing to, is that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. And Peter speaks later in the letter about the commands they have been given through your apostles. 
And so it seems that Peter is referring to the apostles' faith when he says ours. The faith of these ordinary Christians, and therefore our faith too, is as precious as that of an apostle. Our faith is as precious to God as the faith of an apostle. Our faith is as precious to God as the eyewitnesses of Jesus, who shared meals and conversations with him, who watched him preach, who saw him when he had been raised from the dead, who were specially commissioned by Jesus to go and speak about what he had done. We might put the faith of Peter or Paul or John on a pedestal, but our faith is just as precious in the sight of God as theirs. This might sound outrageous to us, but there are two reasons in this first verse why it isn't as crazy as it sounds. Faith is in Jesus and faith is a gift. It's through the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that we have this precious faith. Or to put it another way, our faith is in the righteousness and saving ability of Jesus. It is not faith in ourselves, but faith in the righteous one who makes us righteous, Jesus Christ. And that's why your faith and my faith is as precious as that of an apostle. Because our faith is in the same thing, Jesus. The apostles had faith in Jesus as a saviour who could make them righteous before a holy God. And that is what we have too. We have the same faith that they did. I wonder if you ever worry about how small your faith is. I wonder if you sometimes think about how pathetic and weak it seems in a world with so many fears and doubts that seem so strong and big. I wonder if you sometimes feel like you're hanging on by a thread. Well, here is the good news. It doesn't matter how strong your faith is. It matters who your faith is in. It's the object, not the strength of your faith that matters. And if your faith is in Jesus, however small it seems, your faith is as precious to God as the faith of Peter or Paul. If your faith is in Jesus, you are safe in the arms of a saviour who will not turn you away. And you are declared righteous before a holy God. Your faith is as precious as an apostle because it is faith in Jesus. And the second reason why it isn't crazy to say your faith is as precious as an apostle is that faith is a gift. Verse 1 says that faith is something we have received. It is a gift, not something we've earned. It's not something we deserve. It is something we have been graciously given by God. Just as he gave the apostles faith in Jesus, so he has given it to us. We have been given the same gift by the same God, and so our faith is as precious as that of an apostle. And some of us need to be reminded of the fact that faith is a gift. God didn't see your musical ability and decide to save you so that you could sing in church. God didn't see your extroversion and think, oh, they'll make a great evangelist. God didn't see your quiet care of friends and think, oh, they'll be a really good encourager. God will use our gifts, but he didn't save us because of them. He loved us because he loved us. He saved us as an undeserved gift, not because we had potential. Faith is a gift from God. So Peter wants us to remember how precious our faith is. It is as precious as the faith of an apostle. It is faith in a precious saviour who has made us righteous. It is a precious gift from God. Peter writes so they will remember the precious faith they have received. And then secondly, and very briefly, because this idea of knowledge will come up several times in this chapter. Remember that grace and peace come through knowing Jesus. Remember that grace and peace come through knowing Jesus. Let me read verse 2 again. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of 
Jesus our Lord. The false teachers in this church, which chapter 2 and 3 speak about, were teaching that you could follow your own desires and have peace because there is no judgment. Judgment doesn't seem to be coming. They were teaching that you didn't need the grace of Jesus because judgment isn't coming. There is no judgment. But for us who know that God will judge the world, that heaven and hell are real and that people will go there, Peter gives the assurance that these things are found in Jesus. So don't go anywhere else. It is as we come to know Jesus more and more that we will experience grace and peace more and more in our lives. As we get to know the Prince of Peace more, we will experience the peace that he gives. As we get to know the one who's full of grace and truth, we will experience the grace that he gives. Remember that grace and peace come through Jesus. Don't try to find them anywhere else. And if these things come in abundance through knowing Jesus, let's strive to know him more and more each day. And let's pray that God would give us abundant grace and peace as we do so. So Peter's last word, remember. Remember the precious faith you have, the faith that you have received. And remember that grace and peace come through knowing Jesus. I'm just going to pray and then you'll have a bit of time in your discussion groups. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have a faith as precious as that of an apostle. We thank you that we can know that that is true because it is faith in Jesus, just like they had, and because it is a gift, not something we have earned or deserved. Father, we thank you that grace and peace are found in Jesus, in knowing him. Help us to strive to know him more and more, and please give us an experience of his grace and peace in our lives as we do that. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.